Hello and welcome to this discussion of the Wood Boat Builders Journal problem. Now let's imagine that we are a news vendor selling the Wood Boat Builders Journal, a journal that is published every week. And as a news vendors, we have to make de decisions as to how many journals we want to order for the following week. Now this is quite a challenge because we face random demand. So we don't know just how much exactly we will need. And since we have to order it in advance, there's a risk that we may order too much or too little. Well, of course, if we order too much, that means that at the end of the week, at, or at the end of the selling season, if you will, we will have an inventory of journals left. And that inventory will basically have no value because we cannot sell those journals in subsequent weeks because that journal will be outdated. There will be new versions of the journal for sale in subsequent weeks. Now, conversely, we might order too little, and if that is the case, we will run out of journals while there is still customer demand. But we cannot place a second replenishment order, and that is simply because the publisher will run the printing press once only, and, will the, and they will not restart it just because we realize at the end of that week that we could sell five more journals. So we have that unique situation where we have only one ordering decision to make, and we have a limited selling season, after which our inventory is basically worthless. And these are the classical features of what is called the news vendor problem. And in this case, we want to talk a little bit about the Wood Boat Builder Journal, we have some data here, and I want to show you how we can solve this dilemma that the news vendor faces every week. Now let's take a look at the information that we have here. In the leftmost columns, we have demand da data for a total of 68 weeks. So in week one, for example, customer demand has seven journals for the whole week. And week two, we had journals demanded, for the, demanded the same for week three and so forth. In addition to that, we have some cost information. First of all, we have our cost. Our cost is simply the purchase cost of the news vendor. The cost of the news vendor pays to the publisher per journal. And then we have a salvage value, which simply means that any journal that is left at the end of the week can be sold to a scrap dealer for essentially just the value of the paper itself, which in this case will be $0.10. Cents. And, when we have a, and then we have a price, which is the sales price of the journal to the end customer, and that will be $0.75. Cents. And this is actually all the information we need to solve this problem. And again, our objective is to find the order quantity that minimizes the expected overstock and the expected understock costs. So what I'd like to do first, I want to compute the cost of overstocking and the cost of understocking per unit. So let me denote CO, the cost of overstocking. Now if we have a unit too much in inventory, it will mean that, well, we pay 25 cents for each journal, and the salvage value is only 10 cents. So the difference will be our cost of stocking, of overstocking. And likewise, we have a cost of understocking, which will simply be the profit that we forego by not having a journal available for sale. And that will be our sales price minus the acquisition of cost of 25 cents. The next thing I would like to do is I'd like to take a closer look at the demand data. And to that end, what I want to do is I want to insert a histogram. First of all, I will show you how, show you how to do it if you're using a Mac. And then I will tell you how to do it if you're using a PC. For Mac users, you will have to open up StatPlus. In StatPlus, under Statistics, you will go to Basic Statistics and Tables. And from there, you will then click Histograms. You want to unclick Hide Empty Bins, because we have bins with zeros in them. In the Continuous Variable cell, you will highlight from your Excel file all of the demand data. Then, in the bin range, you will highlight the bin ranges. This does not need to be done with PC, but will need to be done with StatPlus. Make sure that you have labels in the first row checked at the bottom. Then you will click OK. From there, StatPlus will give you your histograms in the new Excel spreadsheet. If you want to copy the chart and the data into your existing spreadsheet, you can, or you can leave them in the separate spreadsheet. Now let me quickly explain how to do this in PC. For PC, you will go to Data, Data Analysis. And in the data analysis window that pops up, there's a field histogram. You simply highlight that and click OK. Now for the input range, we're going to select all the demand data. And then you want to click an output range and simply highlight one cell on the worksheet. This will be where your uh, data will show up on the spreadsheet. And also highlight cumulative percentage. And then we click on OK. And here we get a little histogram. I also want to add a plot. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the bin and the frequency. And now we go to insert and insert a column graph, a 2D column graph to be specific. Now this should bring us all together. We should all have a frequency table and 
a chart showing our frequency in a graph. What this basically tells us is that out of our total of 68 weeks, we have we had zero demand in six weeks, we had one unit demanded in nine weeks, then we had two units demanded in 14 weeks, and so forth. So you can s clearly see that the probability that demand is very low, is zero or one, is relatively low, and then the then demand kind of peaks at around three to four units per week. And the probability of having a very low demand occurrences is also relatively low. Now that you can see now you can see here that the Excel created a table with bin zero to seven and then simply more. Well this more is actually a demand occurrence of eight units. So in only one week did we have demand of eight units. Now you can see in the data chart that this distribution somewhat resembles a little bit at least a normal distribution. It's not quite normal, but here you at least see a probability density function for these specific data. We call this an empirical distribution function because we do not simply assume that it is normally distributed or that it follows any other standard probability distribution. But rather we take the actual demand and we let those actual data tell us what exactly the probability distribution looks like. So again, this is called an empirical probability distribution. Now let's go back to solving this problem. Now we have an idea of how demand is dispute, distributed. The first thing we want to do is we want to compute what is called the critical fractile. And, I'll, and we just call that CF. Now the critical fractile, as you may recall, having read it in the book, is simply the ratio of the cost of understocking divided by the cost of understocking plus the cost of overstocking, which in our case here will be about 77%. And again, this is called the critical fractile. Sometimes it is also called the critical ratio. It is the same thing. So what this means is that the 77% that is our optimal in-stock probability. So it means that to minimize our expected overstocks and our understock costs, we have to have an in-stock probability of about 77%. Now clearly we can find the 77% in our table here under our cumulative probabilities. And you'll see that 77% falls somewhere between bin 3 and bin 4. But that simply means that in about between 69 and 83 percent of all cases, demand will be uh, between three and four units per week. So you can see that we'll have that. Well, we don't have a bin that corresponds exactly to a cumulative probability of 77 percent. So what we want to do in this case, and it can be shown in studies and has been shown in previous studies, we will always be better off to select the higher bin. So if we have an optimal in-stock quantity of 77 percent. We don't find that exact value in our empirical histogram. What we want to do is we want to go to the next higher cumulative probability and read the corresponding bin value, which in this case is 4. So this means that our optimal order quantity, if we use an empirical probability distribution, will be 4. And again, the reason is because this 4 corresponds relatively closely to our optimal in-stock probability of 77%. 4 actually corresponds exactly with 84% in stock probability, and this will be our best shot. We should order 4 units for the next week. So this is what you need to know to calculate the news vendor model. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching.